Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Times Exclusive here on Times Television. I'm your host, Brian Bunn. I'm glad that you're able to join us in this edition this week. My guest today is Professor Tandika Nkandawiri. Professor Tandika Nkandawire is the professor and the first chair of African Development at London School of London School of Business of Economics. London School of Economics. Currently, Professor Tandika Nkandawire is the visiting professor at the University of Cape Town. Professor Tandika Nkandawire, quite an honor oh, thank to you. have you tonight thank you. Thank in you. Times Exclusive. I'm delighted to be on this show. Uh, welcome back to Malawi. How often do you come back to Malawi? Almost every year since I began coming back. And I was away for 30 years mm. in exile. And since the multi-party elections, I'm, I'm in this country every year. Almost. How do you remember those, those years? And why did you decide to, to escape from Malawi? I didn't actually <laughs> decide to escape. I was... Mm. I left Malawi as a bona fide member of the Malawi Congress Party uh, to study, and I was a journalist for Malawi News. Mm. And the idea was to, I was going to come back to Malawi News, and I actually rushed my degree, and did quite, you know, because uh, I wanted to come back. And then the cabinet crisis struck, and many of us were declared, or found ourselves in, uh, in uh, positions which were considered as uh, unacceptable. And, and do you have any regrets over what happened that particular time? When you look back, time lost yes, and everything. Yes, yes, a lot. I mean, a lot of, uh, you know, almost a whole childhood. Almost something, uh, something was taken one, you know, was taken away from me. And um, uh, of course, you can always say, well, in the meantime, you did the following things, and yeah. you're lucky you did. I mean, people who stayed behind suffered more than some of us who stayed abroad. I mean, some of them, you know, were jailed, killed, you know. So, in a sense, those of us who were in exile can be said to be privileged. You know? uh, the cost to, to us was missing home, but some, you know, many were detained. Many people spent, uh, you know, lives in jail. That's one thing, Malawi. I always suggested we should have had a truth commission, you know? mm. so people can. There is a lot of pain in Malawi. When you meet some some old, you know, some of my generation here, they are silent about it, but they they went through some very hard times. And so I was privileged in being uh, away from, uh, you know, the, the you know the, the imprisonment. And, uh, but I missed home very much, dearly. And so I, I always kept very close, close to Malawi. So you'd be very surprised how well informed I am on, on Malawi affairs. I mean, details of Malawi affairs. I kept up with Malawi. Fifty years after independence, what's your impression? You, be, you, you, the, the past few years have been coming back yes. home. But uh, what's your impression? Uh, about this country? Well, I think a lot of things have happened in Malawi. Mm. I mean, you have the longer city, you have the capital city, you have expanded. Uh, uh, but I'm, uh, it's what's stunning when you go to the countryside in some of the areas, nothing has happened, you know? Mm. You have places where they used to have bus services and there are no longer buses going there. You know, there have been, there been regression in quite a large number of, you know, of, of, um, of you know, especially in the rural areas, it's striking, I mean, really very striking. And of course, you, you get struck by, struck by, I used to travel between, you know, from here, going to Mzimba, yeah. you see the massive deforestation around Kasungu and the area, I think that's always struck you. But really, the most striking thing to me has been the complete failure to transform agriculture. Who, who, who is to blame? Is it the, the people? Is it the kind of leaders that have been electing since the dawn of multi-party democracy? If you may be candid with me on that one. Well, my, today I gave my, elect, you know, my, my, my keynote address was to go through all the stages. Mm. The colonial government 
a neglected uh, peasant agriculture in Malawi. Okay? The, it was the idea that Malawi would produce labor for the mines, and uh, you know. so there was very little interest in promoting uh, a peasant agriculture, as as happened in Ghana, you know, with cocoa or, yeah. or uh, uh, coffee in Uganda. So, so we really had we start off very badly. In fact, the, the British, uh, the colonial government is referred to Malawi as, a, as, a, as an imperial slum. Mm -hmm. So we were bad. Mm -hmm. And the nationalists were very concerned with that and they were going to do something to change that. And the strategy they were going to adopt, they, they, they were going to um, pursue involved mass literacy, cooperatives, infusion of new ideas in farming and so forth. When, anyway, and the irrigation was also, and the cooperatives were very important thing. Uh, Kamuzu government did not, after five years, thought this didn't work. So they dropped that model. Yeah. And they chose to have a model where they would pick up their chikumbe, you know, the ones who could, who they thought would succeed and support that. The rest would learn from their, from their chikumbes. So you had a development of these chikumbes mm -hmm. and nothing was done for the smallholders. So. The smallholders now continued now as tenants and you know as cheap labor for the, the estates, which was the same colonial model, except now it was internalized. They were, not, they were no longer going to uh, to uh, Rhodesia or mm -hmm. they were now doing. In, 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 in. So by we end Kamuzu regime with again extremely poor peasants and the, all the information we have on child you know, infant mortality and so forth were very bad. So, so you had a sector, the state sector, grew rapidly and was seen as a success by, by, by quite a number of uh, people, but the problem of poverty and poor farmers and smallholder farmers was unresolved. Mm -hmm. The Munuzi government uh, liberalizes the market. Uh, partly because the Kamuzu model used ADMAC to extract the surplus from the smallholders. Mm -hmm. And, couldn't, and, there was a, and the, not, there were a lot of restrictions on poor farmers. You know, they couldn't sell things to the marketing boards directly. They had to go through the state. So, and by liberalizing that, we suddenly saw small farmers going into a, into barley tobacco. Mm -hmm. but, that, but at the same time, there was no policy about infrastructure, no policy about marketing. And many of the assumptions that ADMAC would be replaced by the private sector did not turn out right. Yeah. So there was, yes, an improvement in the prices received by uh, peasants, but that was, that was one off. There was no new initiative, new, no, no new technology. Mm. The Bingo regime comes up with, uh, well, an idea which starts uh, with, um, uh, with the Muruzi government, the starter pack, but it, it makes it much more general. You have the fertilizer uh, subsidies, and that's where we are now. Eh? And, and fertilizer sub subsidy. It's a good idea. I mean, I have no problem with that. But I think that it's not comprehensive agriculture policy. You know, it, it's, it's, it's food production. Uh, well, what we need is really a, 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 a policy that makes the smallholders actually enter the commercial market. I'm, I'm glad you've talked about that. But let's quickly talk about uh, the fertilizer subsidy in general. Yes. What, what's, what's your view? Oh, it's necessary. I mean, it's, Do you uh, think we should carry on with the fertilizer subsidy because as I said it's a drain on our economy. Any subsidy is a drain. That's what it, the, the, the thing that you have to think there are two ways of looking at the subsidy. You can either see it as a welfare program yes. yeah, of yes. helping the poor. Uh, or you can see it as a technological a support for small farmers to use uh, technology, better technology. Mm -hmm. I think w what we should if we're gonna keep if it's gonna be sustainable, we have to make it transformative. That it's not just you receive uh, subsidies to reproduce yourself the same way every year, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to somehow link it with much more than just giving... Uh, but you realize that uh, it has now become a tool to get political votes? Well, <laughs> and the, and the, and the minister today said that... I said that at the meeting, but he said no. Uh, you know. But again, that's not the problem. If, a, uh, if the... Uh, in fact, it's good, it's political. Yeah, it's good that, you know, uh, this is it's like free primary school now you cannot re remove it you know you'd have you'd have trouble politically you know? yeah so I I think the best way to look at it is to take it as given this is irreversible okay and it's f figure out how do we make it better mm. and by better I mean not only meeting these welfare needs of uh, food self-sufficiency but being a tool for transformation so that these people small farmers actually become 
we can produce for you know surpluses for the mm. market. Right now, it's almost just. Uh, so, so, to, so to answer my question, yes, are you of the view that we should continue for the fertilizer subsidy? Yes or no? Yes, 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 yes absolutely. Yes. Do we have the the, the financial mass to carry on? My dear, my dear friend, if you see the amount of money that has popped up in the cash gate story that is wasted from Malawi government, mm -hmm. we have the money. You know, I mean, look at the. I remember once when the Pek Sulgoyale was leaving the Reserve Bank, he, he said one third of the Malawi budget is being stolen. So, and that's more than what the subsidy takes care of. Mm. But, but more important, if we make the subsidy to lead towards increased production and beyond just self consumption, mm -hmm. it, was, it will, you know, it will end. Lots of the programs where peasants have been adopted new technologies take a long time before mm. they're self sufficient. I think. Mm. It's unfair to expect the subsidy scheme like Malawi to say, okay, five years now you stop. No, that's, they take a long time before they, you know. You, 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 Professor, you have been all over the, the globe addressing people and sometimes lecturing. Where are we missing when it comes to development in this country? Many, um, I think the, the fundamental thing right now would be yes. what, what vision do we have? Okay. Development requires a number of things. Uh, one, the most, most important, is a vision. Mm. A vision and the will to do better. Really. Two, you need a state that wants to implement that vision, and that has a capacity to implement that vision. And, and one element of the capacity is having a good civil service. Mm. Basically, a civil says almost on merits. Yeah. Okay. Thirdly, you have to convince the nation that your vision is worth fighting for. Okay. It should not be a one man's dream. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, you know, that's 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 we've been making that mistake. Sometimes I was in Guelo, I, I dreamt about that. That should not be the case. It, it should, a, a, an effective state should be able to sell its idea, so it becomes a national idea. And and that it mobilizes, especially human resources, to implement its project. What has happened in Malawi, our bureaucracy has been, which at one time was considered fairly efficient. Mm. Because Kamuzu did not use the bureaucracy for repression. You know, there are certain things Kamuzu left behind, which are very interesting. He didn't use the judiciary for repression. Mm -hmm. uh, he used these traditional courts, they were called. And the army was not used for repression. So, you know, he used the, 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 the paramilitary youth, youth uh, movements. Mm. Uh, and civil service was fairly meritocratic. And those were unusual legacies. And we should have built on, that, on those. Instead, there has been, unfortunately, uh, in many cases, too much interfer inter interference with, it, especially with the bureaucracy. Uh, but anyway, the, the point that you, you, need some, you need a vision a state structure mm. as an instrument that carries out that vision, that has the capacity to do that, and that sells this project to, to, the, to, to the general to, to, to its citizens. Have we been electing the right leaders, in your opinion? I mean, in, in what sense? Because, <laughs> because the, the other school of thought has been yes. that maybe we are where we are in terms of development because of the crop of leaders that we have put in office. Yeah, if they have failed to develop, obviously, if, if the country has not developed, the leaders are to blame. I mean, uh, there is, you know, it's not, I don't have to describe them as, they, they have, it's quite obvious that they have not delivered. They have not delivered. No, it's quite obvious that they have not delivered, no. So it's what very obvious they have not delivered. <laughs> so what, what can Malawians now do? Our major instrument today mm. is democracy. Yeah? And I have very strong faith in the corrective power of democracy. You see, a dictatorship can come and give you development for five, ten years. Somewhere along the line, something always happens. And we've had an experience with this. Because the, when, when democracies run, when the model they're pursuing is no longer valid, yeah. nobody can tell them. You know, you, you couldn't tell a Kamuzu, say, okay, well, okay, now this model that you had before is not, now it's, it's exhausted. Yes. It won't change. Mm -hmm. So we have had an experience of a a dictatorship that manages development fairly well for 10 years and then things go wrong. Mm -hmm. We have had a democracy that for five years does the same thing. Bingo's first term, mm -hmm. high growth, high performance, relatively high, but 
Obviously, because there's a political pressure to perform. And that's again, this was democracy at work, when democracy is putting pressure on a, on a leader to perform. Mm -hmm. For some reason, the, the government interpreted its big vote of 62 as saying you can now relax you know, on uh, pressures from us. Mm -hmm. yeah. But anyway, the only instrument we have for a democracy like ours is, 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 you know, is democracy itself. That is, use our parliament, parliamentary processes and to have our citizens in, insist on these leaders that they perform better. That's that's all. I mean, we, we can't ask donors to do it for us. We cannot ask them, you know, uh, have a military coup where democracy. You know, yeah. and we have chosen that. Yeah. And on that, there's no compromise from my, my, my mm. point of view. Malawi, Malawi has signed a number of treaties. Uh, do, do you think we are taking advantage of these things? Some of them, some, again, somebody made a, le a lecture today here, listened to. We, seem, we tend to sign things without reflecting on them very much. Mm. You know, uh, but it's not only, not only a Malawi disease, it's an African, Pan African problem. Mm. Africans have signed all kinds of agreements, apparently on the assumption that nobody will ever think about them. You know? So we have, sometimes we'll, we'll, we'll you know, be involved in three, four, five interlocking uh, regional arrangements you know, yeah. without actually examining if they are consistent or not. Mm -hmm. Malawi has been very, uh, quite, quite interesting. You know, we, we are very active in Okomesa, and, and it's a free trade. Uh, 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 and quite, we sign most of these agreements much, much faster than anybody else. Mm -hmm. I don't know what debates there are at the government level, why we sign, why we didn't sign. You know. mm -hmm. uh, but it's true that many times our governments sign arrangements that they have not... not, not Do you not think thought. our politicians do we have enough technocrats in these you know, ministries that, that understand these things? That's where the issue comes up. For a democracy, the issue is not that the elected are technocrats. Yes. It's that they have a civil service they can, that is technocratic, mm -hmm. meritocratic, it's efficient, that impl implements the orders of the, of, the, of the government of the day. You know? mm -hmm. Once you undermine the civil service, then the ministers themselves undermine themselves. You know? That's one thing, I don't know how one can explain governments that. that mm -hmm. If you undermine the civil service, your own effectiveness is undermined. Because mm -hmm. it means basically your dream, if you have any, mm -hmm. will be implemented. So it is the failure to, to create, a, kind of a, to, 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 to build up a bureaucratic capacity that functions beyond the party. Mm -hmm. And that if the party goes, you don't have to unscramble the whole civil service because yeah. of the party. Yeah. So the politicians have failed in a sense they have, that they have not uh, created for themselves an, uh, an instrument that is effective, which is an effective civil service. Mm. They, have in, they have tried to dilute in many ways in the fundamental basis of, 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 of bureaucracies, which is a uh, you know, sense of hierarchy, yeah. sense of merit, and sense of team spirit. Well, in this well, sense, yes. one should not blame only the uh, our politicians. There were a lot of experiments by the World Bank on the civil service that left us in a mess. I mean, uh, they tried to introduce private private market practices in the bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. You know, putting people in contracts and all that, and that created complete confusion. So you are not you are not for the contracts in government. No, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. What would you want to see in government? The, Oh, good old civil service where I, I, I join the young person and mm. I dream to rise to be permanent secretary, you know, mm. and I work my way through. And what I would like to see more, perhaps, if there were, there was a, a process of promotion that is an element of exams, you know, where you take an exam, yeah. say four or five years you take an exam. Um, yeah, that would have two effects. One, it enhances uh, uh, the reading culture of the civil service, but then you have to read, but you, be, you'd have an exam. They do that in Japan, in Korea, where you know you you you, you f enforce merit by some have some system of exams. Yes. But more important, there must be some sense that I can go up, and it's fair the US going up. Okay. And once you introduce the market, uh, the market has different principles. Mm -hmm. If you introduce the market in civil service, uh, on the on the grounds that you are trying to compete with the market. Mm -hmm and that you're trying to pay people according to the market, when there's no market for that product, yeah. you will have a mess. And that's what, where we are now. You know? So different governments that we have elected have come up with different policies. 
the current one is yes. now you know into uh, cement and malata do, do you think these are what it's going to take for this country to develop i don't think so i think i'll tell you one thing I th which i think one yes. thing I, uh, positive yes. is that there is a, a realization by government that the that the rural sector is not just agriculture okay mm -hmm. that there's more there's housing there is a uh, you know there are many other things that you can do mm. outside just farming. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's an important shift in policy. Can I can I can I stop you there? Yeah. We have to take a short commercial break. In case you're just joining us, welcome aboard. This is Times Exclusive here on Times Television. I'm your host Brian Banda. My guest in this edition is Professor Tandika Nkandawire from London School of Economics. We'll be right back in 30 seconds. In case you're just joining us, welcome aboard. This is Times Exclusive, airing on Times Television. I'm your host, Brian Banda. My guest in this edition is Professor Tandika Nkandawiri. Professor Tandika Nkandawiri is the first professor and chair of uh, African Development at London School of Economics. He's now the visiting professor at the University of Cape Town. Welcome back, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, so, so to, to, to continue with my question, is the, the, dis question. the distribution of malata and yes. cement, yes, yes. What is going to take for the people of this country to develop? So, like I was saying, that it's good the government has introduced housing policy for the rural sector. Because I've never heard our government think about social policy or the housing policy. As social, uh, to me, housing policy is, so, is social policy. Mm -hmm. I generally am opposed to any social policy that involves targeting a small group. Mm -hmm. I I'm basically believe in more universal uh, provision. The way Malata and Cement program is working will involve identifying who should be given uh, help. And that means you have to decide on a criteria. Mm -hmm. The government has given a criteria which I, I find really very strange, which is that they will support those who have indicated that they're willing, willing to improve themselves. Well, we had the Achikumbe with Kamuzu Banda mm -hmm. on farming, mm -hmm. which eventually led to massive neglect of the rest mm -hmm. because there was a focus on those who could do it and I think this if the government insists on it as a kind of a, a selective process like that it that would be the effect and so I'm not sure why why you know why they you know they've chosen a, they're given a criteria which will be very selective mm -hmm. and and normally you think of selective as selecting the poorest this one is going to select the ones the most progressive and this is what the Achukumbe Yes. Yeah, problem. Yes, and and it left a lot of poverty in the countryside. So I'm afraid this thing may do may just simply lead to more differentiation in the in the countryside, without solving the problem of, of housing, which I think is a good idea to to address. Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I think the government should be encouraged to uh, to think about how do you provide support for housing in the countryside. But I think the choice of the criteria that they, they are using for identifying the beneficiaries is to me uh, unacceptable. So, are you voting the Democratic Progressive Party over that policy? But if, if that policy, then, then of course, yeah, you're voting that part, the party which came with which the policy. Yes. Why? Because it's a policy which is selective, mm -hmm. in the sense that, uh, and it's selective, selective in a, in, a, in a, that usually people think of policy like that as being pro-poor. You said you select the poorest. Yes, but this one is other way around. You see, okay. it says it's selecting. The ones who have already sh shown signs that they are, you know, of self-improvement and so yeah. forth. And so uh, I, I find it very odd that that would be, you know. Uh, why, why is Malawi still poor today? Partly because we have, we, one of the discussions we discussed, we have not been able to find a way of making the smallholder producer in Malawi mm -hmm. commercially viable uh, enterprise. Mm -hmm. But it's also because of people like you. Why? You have been living out of, outside this country for a long time. If well, you, I don't if know. If you were here, I would be. I'd uh, probably be dead. But anyway, you, <laughs> <laughs> you could probably be dead. No, I mean, uh, I had lots of. I had trouble with the Kamuzu government. Yes, but also. when Kamuzu era yes. was gone, 
wasn't it the right time to come back home? Well, look, you know, you know, Malawi is a very strange country. Most of the people who were in exile, um, you know, it, the, the, the movement that won quotation mark, it's not like South Africa where the ANC in exile came back. You know, yeah. that is not our, our situation. Mm -hmm. uh, most of us were strangers, even to those who were the new leadership. You know, I mean, the new leadership had been very close to the MCP, mm -hmm. and so we were not close to them. I mean, you know, uh, I think uh, Peter Mtareke is the first, uh, and Kabingu was the first of the exiled people to, yeah. to be any close to power. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, I got, you know, I had conversations with them about a lot of things. So it was not as if there were open doors and when you came in. Mm. Uh, secondly, I, I think that the use of, uh, in a general sense, the use of your, your diaspora nowadays, mm. uh, and Malawi is not doing very well in that, you don't, people don't have to be here to be used. You know? Okay. This is a, uh, we're living in a world of communications. And, there are all these professors abroad who will be willing to sp maybe spend a month, two months teaching here. Or, you know, there are many ways they can be used. Mm -hmm. We can be used, you know. And, and I, I find myself being used by other countries. Why not my, my, my own country? That's the way, uh, it's because you don't want to, to come and settle in Malawi. Or is who, it a, is who it, told you that? I don't is, is, it, is it a question of coming to settle, or what, what? 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 What would you want the government or those responsible? What kind of engagement would you want from 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 them? Or oh, nothing. I don't expect. You no, know, I don't expect any engagement from the government. So why can't you come and stay, 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 and contribute to the development of this country? If I found that I had something to do, I would, I would, I would, I would come here. If I knew that something I could, you know, that I could contribute really, you know, and that people around me think I'm contributing. Yeah. Whenever you talk about contribution, Malawi, people immediately think, of which party are you in? You know, I mean, I, I, I'm not a politician. <laughs> I'm, mm -hmm. I'm an academic, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and if, if universities are active in getting people abroad, we'll maybe... So, so, so to answer my question... I'll give an example. Yes. I, when, I was, I was at, uh, when I was leaving my job in the UN, mm -hmm. three universities, non-Malawian universities, <laughs> actually asked me immediately, mm -hmm. when are you coming? Okay. Some of them, you know, in some of the universities in the world, they check, they know so-and-so is in that place. When is he retiring? And as okay. soon as you retire, they call, make a phone call. Okay, yeah. if you retire, come back home. Yeah, so then, this did not happen to me. But anyway, I got these offers. And that is a general problem. That mm -hmm. our, we, are not, we don't know what to do with the diaspora. Because we think that diaspora are only useful if they are resident in our country. Mm -hmm. You have to imagine, you have to realize, I've been 30 years abroad. You get commitments abroad. Maybe I haven't finished paying my mortgage. I've not, you know, there are a lot of things, small yeah. commitments. Yeah. And that make people stay abroad, or you're having a medical treatment, which or you, you so you, you must stay home, and mm. and those barriers uh, are sufficient to keep you abroad, yeah. but they are not uh, sufficient to block you from doing things in Malawi. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we just have to find ways of. Uh, I mean, the kind of India and China, they all have the same problem of of, of diasporas, and and they have found ways. Of, of, sort of, of de dealing with that. How is the Malawi government handling the people in, in the diaspora? The diaspora is not very happy. I mean, <laughs> it's not very happy? No, because there are, there are uh, constant announcements of a new initiative. Yeah. You know, and, uh, so are, are you seeing any initiatives? Well, the last one I heard about was they were looking for our CVs, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, which you can offer, offer some of them, you can actually get, get, get them on, uh, on the internet. But anyway, they were looking for people's CVs and then nothing happened. And there's a whole debate about citizenship, dual citizenship. Yes. And, you know, um, which uh, uh, p people complain about. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I mean, you know, as I said, you know, you, you, there are a lot of people who you probably will not get back home full time. You know? Look, every major country I know today has, even in kind of like France, they had a lot of people in IT in the US. Yeah. And for France, that was like a big shop, but, but they wanted to use them. Mm. So you find ways of using them. You may give them visiting professorships. You give them. Some of them do it pro bono. Yeah. So they'll come here, with, you know, uh, and uh, be attached to university and you know teach one month intensely. And you know, the idea of physically moving people back, you know, it's, it's you know, it's uh, it's not important in, for using using uh, people's skills. I, is it fair, professor, to? Talk about how governments in Africa are not serious in using people in their diaspora mm. when you have not made a serious commitment to, 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 to the African Africa. continent. 
My comments, commitments to Africa, I think, are very serious. I mean, I... Uh, what have you done in the past 30 years? Look, for I example, left, to Malawi. I was... Uh, in order to stay for Africa as a whole, I mean, I was in, in Stockholm, teaching mm -hmm. in Stockholm. I left Stockholm, I went to Senegal, because I, I realized one day that I don't have to go to Malawi. I don't have to wait for the government of Malawi to change for me to go back to Africa. I can go somewhere else in Africa. Yes. So. And I spent 12 years uh, in Senegal. And then I went to help for three years to set up an institute in, 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 a, uh, in, in Zimbabwe, for Zimbabwe. Mm. And then I went back, uh, then I got a job and offered to go to the UN. Um, but, uh, so I, you know, and, and my, my scholarship is entirely on Africa, so that's not a, a, a problem. But it is true, and this is to underline that, mm -hmm. there is, there's a problem of diaspora that we have not resolved. And, what and I don't it? believe that uh, it's too much of an individual problem. Individuals will tell you all kinds of reasons why. The kids are going to school, and if they come here, they cannot pay the school fees, or, you know, there are a lot of things, commitments you have. That, mm. uh, mm. And people like me, you're getting old, so you don't, maybe you're not as young and as useful as you would have been, say, 20, 30 years ago. Um, but the most important thing for a country to strategize on is to find out the moment when those people can be used. Mm -hmm. And that richer countries, countries much richer than us, China and India, they look for that moment. You capture the moment of those people, like if they are looking for, I know a Malawian scholar, I won't mention, he, he had a Fulbright scholarship and he wanted to spend six months in Malawi. Mm -hmm. So you apply to the university for res no, to, 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 to take him. Yeah. They never responded, and he ended up doing it in Zambia. You see, you see. So that's what I'm saying, where if, if the University of Malawi, or whatever institution in Malawi, mm -hmm. says, okay, this person is free at that moment, uh, you know, we capture his moment. Yes. You know? And if we can, all, even if there was a database, we just said, please report to us when you, you are available. Yeah. This is a world of IT. Yeah? President Peter Mutarika and his uh, government yes. are working on the reforms. Have you heard about these reforms? Of the state reform? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Are they making sense to you? What was interesting is this. Yes. First of all, the need for reform is obvious. Yes, yes. And, there uh, is need for reform. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, I mean, look, Cashgate has shown that we have a, a big mess in the civil service. Mm -hmm. you know? A big mess. It's mm -hmm. only a small mess. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the need for reform is obvious. The and the, the I think it was the vice president pointed out that a number, how many, more than a hundred reform attempts have been carried out in Malawi. Yeah. yeah. And that bothers me, it bothers me a lot. That is, if there were so many reforms uh, carried out, have we done a review of why they were not implemented? Uh, what what are we doing to make it this one, this particular reform? Uh, you know, real mm -hmm. working. Yeah. Uh, and that can only be answered by wait and see. I'm afraid also that I hope that the reforms are not the type that would, you know, there's this thing called new public management where you introduce ideas of the private sector in, mm -hmm. the, in, the, in, the, in the public. I hope they don't do that. Uh, I hope uh, because it will really confuse <laughs> the, the reform. So, so to answer my question, are they making sense? To I have not read the whole. I mean, I read the document, but yes. I, uh, but you know, these things are you know, a large part of it are uh, what you might call obvious things that mm -hmm. they, they need to be done. The, the trick will be at the implementation level, mm -hmm. uh, how they implement this. Uh, the only concern I had was that I was not quite sure the, the rules they will, that will manage. Ideal. I hope that the, the principal rule is meritocracy, that, that they're creating a meritocratic mm -hmm. and stable mm -hmm. civil service. Our mm -hmm. civil service now is extremely unstable. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, each time you, you know, the elections are coming, you know, the change of minister, government, you're, you know, you're, and yeah. that encourages corruption because people are so insecure. If I knew that this is my secure job, you know, I would want to keep it. You yeah, know? you're right. And I'll, I'll keep my, my, you know, my, my behavior, you know. But now, you know, you, 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 people are forced to engage in very high-risk activities because they can lose their job any time. So, Kashigate has come because of people's insecurities in their jobs. That's one, of, what the, I, one of the contributors, what, yeah, yeah. what, what I'm and, getting from And the you. loss of the, you know, the uh, team spirit, you know. Mm. And, um, and I think some of these crazy experiments that were induced on, the, on, on us, uh, which, you know, I cannot imagine mm. <laughs> that a poor country like Malawi can lose half, a, you know, can lose billion dollars mm -hmm. without 
any ripples in the civil service. Yes. I cannot, I, it's, which means that there must be a complete breakdown internally, mm. just internally of a, of a sense of, of, of team spirit. We don't have much time. Yeah. Your, your, your views on how best we can improve education in the country. There has been a lot of uh, worry going on over Malawians, among us Malawians, on the, the dwindling standards of education. Where have we got it wrong? Well, first of all, teachers, teachers, teachers. We need teachers, a lot of teachers. Yes. And I'm, I have no problem with the, the primary education, you know, massive primary education. That was a good idea. Again, these are things people say, oh, we can't afford it, the lowering standards. Mm -hmm. That's not the issue. The issue now is to, we, that's a basic right for our people. We now make it better. Yeah. Secondly, which is later teacher, 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 our university intake, it must be among the lowest in the world. Mm. The average African university today has 10,000 students, mm -hmm. which is more than our four universities. Right? Mm -hmm. The logical thing to do would be to make these four universities immediately reach the 10,000 average mm -hmm. and have a moratorium on building new universities. Don't build any new universities until we have these four have reached 10 or even more. Mm -hmm. And that's a faster way of doing it. It's cheaper because today the unit cost of training somebody in Malawi is the highest, is the highest in SADC. It was 1.5 million kwacha a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Because the ratio of teacher to student at our university is very low. Mm. So we should expand our existing universities mm -hmm. and give them adequate funding before we build more universities. Mm -hmm. This I've made clear, even, even late bingo, I, I wrote about that you know, mm. to President Joyce, I read, wrote about that. Uh, actually, I feel so strong that I actually wrote letters with tables mm -hmm. and... <laughs> so, uh, and that would... You need good university educated teachers mm -hmm. to teach our children and to have those numbers you have to expand the intake to have today in Malawi 50 years on only producing having university population the intake of 4,000 that makes sense are you an advocate of the uh, dual citizenship look I, I have no problem with it if it was introduced you don't have any problem? No, no, because I would benefit. <laughs> <laughs> so I would yeah. benefit, that's not a problem. But, yeah. uh, but I can see the concerns, you know. It's not, uh, but it, the, some of the concerns are a little bit old-fashioned, you know. The, in the old days, the issue was, where would this person stand in war, you know? Mm -hmm. gonna be. Mm -hmm. And in Malawi, we shouldn't forget, that this was really aimed at the Asians, at the independence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, but they, we didn't want anybody having a British citizen at that time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, so that the, the original reason has disappeared. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but I can see, but you can always put, you know, you can always put new laws that control for that. You know, if you think that you don't want people in, in, living outside, yeah. buy land mm -hmm. or something like that, you can always put provisions that, you know, you cannot, if you're not a residence here, you cannot buy land. I mean, there, mm -hmm. there, there are things of, but generally, it seems to me an, an unnecessary uh, barrier. You know? What do you make of the current regime, the democratic progressive government? As a, what? In their style sense. of leadership and where they are taking this country. My main, my main problem is I, I'm not quite sure of the vision. You're you know, not quite sure of, of the, the vision. Democratic Progressive Party vision. vision right now. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Mm. I'm happy that, from what I understand, people live here. There's a lot of freedom that, that, that I value. I mean, political freedom. Mm -hmm. The press is. I value that. That's extremely. Mm. And my suspicion is that uh, I think the president will will protect that. But I think he, when the academic uh, freedom story was going on, he was he was pained by how it, it looked, how he looked like. You know. do, do you think the academia is against Mutarika? Because he, he said that there is need for the lecturers to do more research and, 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 and concentrate on their jobs rather than attacking his government. How did you take that quote <laughs> from President Well, Bindu. I don't think presidents should, Pres president president should tell, I, don't, I think presidents should not tell people when, when to attack, when not to attack. You know, the issue is that uh, they could have retorted by saying, first of all, we don't have, re uh, where are the resources for, for research? Mm -hmm. But I think it, it was, a, I, don't, I didn't take it very seriously. I mean, he, he, he wasn't saying... He was don't, serious. No, I mean, he didn't say, don't attack me, mm -hmm. I will, I'll arrest you, you know. Mm -hmm. he, he expressed an opinion. Some people said, you oh, know, that, you know, you should be doing, doing more writing than talking to me. Yeah. Eventually, and I don't think it's his business you know, to do that, but I, I wouldn't take that as something 
I took it lightly. I didn't take it. You know, mm. I thought I was just intrigued. Why would he say that? You know, mm. he's an academic. He is on until recently an academic himself. So he, how would sure you how would you rate President Mutari? Against what? Against the other presidents that we have had. Well, I'll give him more time. Give him more time. I mean, both him and Joyce didn't have much time to, to, to show what they are. I mean, Your impression of Joyce, Bond? Well, I, I think she, you know, this, I think she got trapped by, um, two things got to her trapped. One, mm. of course, the, coming into power very <laughs> unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. Two, she had an, a, a massive economic problem to, to correct. Mm. Okay. And, and usually, and she chose a method of correction that was painful. Mm. And she swallowed the whole IMF World Bank. Yeah. yeah. I always think she could probably have negotiated with the donors, say, look, I'm going to do these things, but we need programs, social programs, mm -hmm. um, to, you know, to, uh, to limit the shock. Mm. Yeah. But she took the whole, you know, the whole, the whole package. <laughs> I think even the donors were surprised, I mean, mm. how she did that. Um, of course, we are like in Malawi and proud that we had our first female president. Mm. Um, but she had two years. Two years was that uh, there were some lessons from um, uh, the the elections. Uh, that Malawian voters probably don't care very much for personal gifts. Mm -hmm. uh, that the, what they want from you is public goods. Mm. Are you building a road uh, or are you building schools? Mm. Not that you gave them. Do you aspire to run for the presidency? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm too. I'm too. First of all, I'm just too old. But, but I'm an academic, you know. So no, 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 no plans, no, no intention of going no. into ministry. When are you coming back home, Professor? I'll, I'll finish our discussion on that note tonight. By coming back, meaning when am I buying a house? Uh, probably you have a house in Malawi. Yeah. So yeah. So what do you mean? When, 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 <laughs> when, when are you coming back and live in Malawi? You only come here three, four days, and you're back. You know, sometimes much longer than that, you know. You just, I come here quite often, you just, I, I yes. don't play, play it big, I mean, I, I, I come here quite often. Mm. I would like to come, you know, I, I'd like to come home, um, but I have realized also that I have so many commitments in both in Malawi and outside Malawi that mm. I, would, I would have to maintain, you know. So I would have to maintain maybe two homes or two, three, that kind of thing. Yeah. As we finish our discussion tonight, what message do you have for Malawians? watching us tonight well one is that we are living in a democracy mm -hmm. and that Malawians should use democracy to the money maximum to express their views to persuade uh, to use their power of, of, of voting mm -hmm. to force leadership to deliver and that um, and that to do that they have to think about politics beyond the ethnic politics you know, mm. and begin to think really in terms of interest, basic interest and commonalities of interest across borders, across ethnic, mm. you know, uh, thing. But, but, but more important that to remember that Malawi is a democracy and mm. they, they can use their democracy. They should use their democracy to try to make things better for themselves. And that means, you know, edu self-education, organ self-organization mm. and so forth. What are you reading this week, Professor? Actually, <laughs> this week I've been reading an article, a book on, uh, it's very funny that you ask me, a book on Peter Mackay. Mm -hmm. Peter Mackay was a, an Englishman who was, what, was a, who helped us, I, I used to work for Malawi News, but, mm -hmm. and he helped us a lot in Malawi News. Okay. And he founded a magazine called Sopano. Mm -hmm. And and he should be a hero somewhere. Mm -hmm. but somewhere you know, Unfortunately, the time is not our best ally. We wish we had more time. Professor Tandika Kandawire from London School of Economics, and now the visiting professor at uh, the University of Cape Town. Many thanks for joining thank us thank you, thank tonight. You, thank you, thank you. And this is how we wrap up our discussion tonight in Times Exclusive. In this edition, I've been talking to Professor Tandika Kandawire. Professor Tandika Kandawire is the first chair of uh, African Development at London School of Economics. He now is a visiting professor at the University of Cape Town. We actually caught him at a CISANET conference in Lilongwe, where he was uh, a major speaker at this particular conference. And many thanks for CISANET for organizing this uh, interview tonight. My name is Brian Banda, and from all of us here in Lilongwe, it's goodbye.